What's up? Uh, this is Dylan Brooks. I'm from the Memphis Grizzlies, and I'm on the three-point conversion. You're doing well. I know you always ask me, but I hope you're doing well, too. I'm doing great today. Great. Um, glad you're doing well as well. Um, I know we've talked a lot the last several weeks about Gordon Hayward's impact on the team. Um, All-star voting opens today. Do you feel like he is somebody that should be in the conversation for one of those Eastern Conference All-star spots? Yeah, I'd say absolutely. He, he should be in, a, in that category. Um, he's been everything we could have imagined and more. Uh, career highs across the board, scoring, shooting, uh, fourth quarter efficiency. And then what he's done for our young guys, just their confidence, He's raised their level, our level, um, in his professionalism, his competitive spirit. So, uh, absolutely. I know things kind of like him getting onto the team kind of went really fast in the training camp and everything. Have you thought about, not necessarily speaking for him, but what it would mean? He's been an all-star before, and then obviously had the injury issues in Boston, what it means for him personally to kind of get back at that level and be playing better than he has at any point in his career this season? Well, it's a great question for him, as you said. Um, I think you look at what he's been through, um, you know, with the injuries, and you never know if you're going to come back from something like that. It was one of those injuries that you never know. And the way he's responded um, and put himself back in that ca category speaks to his character, his work ethic. Um, and to me, this would be a great reward for that. So. Um, I think it's a great question for him, but, um, you know, I'm a huge fan. He's been more than I could have asked or imagined. Thank you. Yes, sir. Let's go to Jason Brown. Hey, JB, um, even though you guys have had some slow starts like last night, but you're right in that game under five minutes to go, five-point game, yeah. Indiana goes on a bit of a run. I'm curious now if you've had a chance to look at the video, how much of it was their experience, their ball movement, versus maybe any defensive breakdowns you may have had? Yeah, Jason, it was a little bit of both. You know, you got to give them credit. They're an experienced team. They have some vets. Uh, they've played together. They've won big games. They've been in playoff, you know, series. Um, they're a very good team, you know, they, with, with the veterans that understand how to play and they know how to play together. So that was part of it. Part of it was some breakdowns on our end, um, you know, on both sides of the ball that just didn't allow us to turn the corner last night in the fourth quarter. But the spirit was there. Um, the guys kept fighting, kept clawing. You know, there were a couple dry spells throughout the game that probably cost us, you know, offensively. We were right there. I think we're up four and we have five or six possessions. We just don't score. And it's not, it wasn't a product of not good shots. We just didn't knock down. I think we had three wide open shots. I just showed the guys. And uh, our message is just stay with it. It's going to turn. Those shots are going to fall and keep digging in defensively because that's what's going to give us a shot every single night. Let's go to Nick Carboni. Afternoon, JB. As, as a coach that likes to challenge his team, uh, is, this is a unique kind of opportunity to have the day off between the games between the same team, the same team that you struggled against and, and you know couldn't complete the comeback against last night. Is that kind of how you view it as a, as a unique challenge? Yeah, these are great challenges right here. It feels almost like playoff type challenge right here. You know, you, you um, we didn't get the job done last night. We learned from it. We adjust. We watch the film. We practiced it today. Uh, the details of what we need to do to, to get that done tomorrow night. And now we got to go execute it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's fresh in our minds. We learn from it. We grow. And it's a great challenge tomorrow. So, Looking forward to our young guys building off of last night and growing and, and getting better. And uh, nothing more sweeter than going after the same team after a loss. Let's go to Rod Boone and Zach Aldridge. Hey, JB, just wondering, your time in the league, can you remember being around a team that's kind of been like this? You guys have been very streaky where you either have lost multiple games or kind of won multiple games this year. Can you remember being a part of a team like this? And how do you explain what's going on with you guys uh, in that regard? Yeah, you know, I, I've not. I mean, this is sort of, you know, this is a team that it is a little streaky, but we're learning each other. It's 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 a young season. We're learning each other. I think that's part of this. And really, it's, it comes down to consistency, you know, and when we're winning, we're much more consistent on both ends of the floor. 
uh, when we're not, we're, you know, we're not as consistent for 48 minutes. And um, look, I keep saying this, we are a young team, but that's not an excuse. We got to learn how to play more consistently for 48 minutes. And last night we didn't do that. You know, the, I thought the first six minutes were okay. It was really the, the first six minutes or the, sorry, the second six minutes of the uh, first quarter that cost us. And then there was a stretch there in the fourth quarter. So um, look, for us, we, we got to be more consistent. That's the biggest word, you know, that we're using right now. Um, you know, it's frustrating at times because I've seen our best and I know when we're playing well. And if we continue that for closer to 48 minutes, we're going to see these, these losses become wins. And that's the goal here. But uh, for me, Rod, it's just about keeping this group together, keeping them positive, keeping them looking forward, growing not down on themselves. Obviously we're learning and we're growing. We're going to hold each other accountable, um, but it's a long season and we're just going to keep grinding. Thank you. Go to Zach and then Will. Hey, Jimmy, you kind of touched on this and mentioned that it's, it's frustrating. Last night Malik said that, you know, kind of felt like it was a, a loose ball away, a missed shot, a turnover away from winning last night and getting more wins in this stretch that you guys are in right now. How do you deal with that frustration and kind of make sure that the guys don't get, get frustrated so that you get out of this, you know, patch that you're in and, and turn it around and get to where you want to be? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is moving on to the next game, you know, learning from the, the last one, not letting it linger. We're going to learn from it, but you can't let it linger. You know, you got to move forward and, and push ahead. So what happened last night, we learned from it, we talk about it, we grow it, grow from it. And now it's just about moving forward and executing. And my job is to keep their minds fresh and positive and moving forward and staying together. Teams that stay together in this league give themselves a shot. Whether they're winning right now um, or not, I just believe it's going to turn. And you've seen teams in the NBA already this season. It's happened to them. They got off to slow starts. They have found their rhythm again. And it's going to turn for us. We just got to stick with it. And a lot of it, like you said, comes down to a 50-50 ball, a rebound. You think back to the Toronto game, the first Toronto game. We're one rebound away from probably winning that game. We're one shot away from tying it. Last night, we're up four, and we have two threes to go up seven or ten points. They don't go our direction. There's a loose ball that doesn't fall our way. But you just got to stick with it and believe that it's going to turn, that those, those plays are going to become – our plays, those shots that are missed shots are going to become makes. Those 50-50 balls are going to go our direction. Now, we have to go make it happen. Saying it's one thing. We have to go execute it and make it happen. But um, if you never give yourself a chance and you give in, you're, you're, you're defeated already. And we're not going to have that mindset. Hey, JB. Will Kunkel here with Fox 46. Uh, Malik said something last night to the effect of if this team wants to turn around and get going, it's up to him. Is that fair to say by him? What are your expectations of him? Will we see more minutes from him? What are your just general thoughts on him saying that? Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a group effort. Obviously, I love his spirit, and he wants to be a part of this, this change and this movement. And uh, look, he, he has stayed ready. It's unfortunate what's happened. You know, he was playing his best basketball last season. Um, obviously, it, it took a turn there. And... You know, we had a rough start with the with the virus, so he had a limited camp here in a very awkward situation anyway. Um, but now he's back. He's done his job. And I'm looking to him to, you know, help us on both ends of the floor. He has that ability to get to the rim, to create for others. He's got to lock in defensively. I think he's in a better place defensively right now than he's ever been. And uh, he's one of those pieces that can help us. Absolutely. Have you seen anything change with him? I mean, as you know, as a man after what he's gone through? He feels more professional, I think more uh, accountable. And, you know, he's matured through, you know, these last, I don't know, eight, 12 months, I've seen a more mature Malik. So um, his challenge is to continue to, to grow and develop and learn. And I think he's in a good place. Scott Fowler. Uh, JB, you changed your starting lineup uh, last night with Cody and obviously are experimenting some with your bench too. Do you anticipate continuing to experiment or did you like that starting five? You know, 
So I, I'm, I'm watching it. I'll, I'll stick with the starting five right now. I don't know what that'll look like tomorrow. I'm still digging through it, but I thought they got us off to a good start. And, you know, it's a small sample, Scott, as you know, it's, it's hard to evaluate lineups on six or eight minute segments. You know, you, you got to give it some time to run its course a little bit. And that's why I've tried to stick, you know, with certain lineups if I can to, to give them a run. You know, LaMelo's come off the bench. Miles has come off the bench. We've stuck with the same starting lineup basically the entire year after the Cody injury. So we've got a test run there. We've, we've got a good sample there. I've got to get a sample size out of that group now. So let's see, let's see what happens out of the starting unit for the next few games. Obviously, if I need to make a, a, a change there, I will. But I think it's only fair to let these groups run together, get, get a feel for each other, um, and then adjust accordingly. All right, let's wrap up with one from Danny Thompson. Coach Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. You mentioned tinkering with in, in sample sizes. Last night was the first time we had a chance to really see Miles, Malik, and LaMelo all together. Arguably three of the most athletic players, not on the roster, but probably in the NBA. When you have those three on the court together, does it make you want to push the tempo faster because they have so much athleticism and they can do different things? Or is it much more of trying to keep in the flow of the game? I think that group will naturally play faster. I don't think I have to tell them. I just see it happening. That, that group will just naturally. Obviously, I'm going to say to them, our strength's going to be our pace, our transition game with those three. Absolutely. But I think that's just going to come organically in, in how they're going to play. Um, but I think the biggest thing for them is going to be on the defensive end. Because if we're not getting stopped, it's going to be hard to play with the pace we want with that group. So really challenging them defensively to get out uh, get stops, rebound, and run, because that's going to be our strength there. I thought we pushed the ball fairly well last night. You know, I think we're the, probably the second or third best uh, transition fast break team right now in the NBA. That has to remain a pillar for us um, until our half-court offense catches up, you know, and it, it's coming. You know, we're going we're gonna to get there in the half-court, but our, our uh, transition game has to become, um, you know, stay a main piece of what we're doing. And that group, as you talked about, is one of those groups that can really push the pace and get us some easy baskets in transition. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.